I felt and saw this presence of something like a ghost. As I was reaching for my keys, something growled at me coming out of the basement. It was bad energy. I was sort of feeling like I was letting Satan out of hell. I saw out of the corner of my eye what I thought was the girl falling off the roof. I, I couldn't think. It was so loud and I was so terrified that I just froze. I'm not calling for that. I'm calling because I'm freaking out here. I felt this presence try to push itself down on top of me very violently. It would not go away. It was just freaking me out. And I look at my arm and it's got a scratch on it. Welcome, everybody, to Ghost of Greystone, Beverly Hills. My name is Cleet. And I'm Chris. And we are those Keith brothers. And this is episode number 19. 19. We made it to 19. Is that wild? That's fantastic. One more to go. I can't One believe it. One more. It's crazy. And, and, and uh, tonight is the second part of the Rec Wing, right? Yes. The Rec yeah. Wing. We have the bowling alley and the spiral staircase. One of my favorite locations. You say that about every single no, one. No, but this this one, you'll see. All right. You'll see. This, this, the spiral staircase has the most bizarre, incredible uh, encounters that we've had. Some of the best. It ever. does. Yeah. It does. Why, why, yeah. why do you think this area has so many apparitions? Do you know? No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's, it. It's it, it is a connecting area. The spiral staircase connects the boys' wing and the main house. Mm -hmm. not, not like they have to walk. I don't know, but it does connect the main house to the rec wing, mm -hmm. which means the uh, theater and the bowling alley. So why I don't know. It's very bizarre. Hmm. It's a good question though. Yeah. I don't know. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll start with the bowling alley. Let me just say there's yeah. going to be apparitions. There's going to be poltergeist. Uh, there's going to be apparitions and then poltergeists. You've already said that twice. Oh, oh okay. And apparitions. It's it's wild. This is this is a goodie. Yeah, I can't it's, wait. It's, a, it's a good it's a good episode. Yeah. Uh, we'll start Who, with the bowling alley. Uh, first up, mm -hmm. uh, it's the only story from the bowling alley. Yeah. But what a doozy. Okay. And it's from Roxana. And who is Roxana? Okay, so so Roxana, if if we go back and look at episode uh what uh, five or six or something Don't like know. that, whatever it's basement. Don't remember. The basement. Mm. Um oh basement is yeah. seven, eight, 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 nine, ten or seven, eight, oh, yeah, nine. Oh, it could be. Okay. One of those. One of those. Roxana. Um, or also known as Roxy, or also known as Rosie. I don't know this because Joe Segura. Remember, he was the one who said, "Hey, Cleet," and called me over during a, a tour I was giving, and I told Dan, my boss, to take over the mm. tour. And he said, "Here's a story. There's a woman um, uh, downstairs in the basement that the broom was sweeping by itself. Remember that story? I remember that. Right. This is one where you got to hold me. This is when I first met her." Remember, she wouldn't talk to me about the the the, uh, the broom sweeping. Right. She shut me down. But this one is where I first met her. Mm. Really sweet, really nice person. And Joe said, was it Joe? I don't know if it was Joe. Somebody told me, got to talk to her because mm. she had some weird thing happen to her in the, in the bowling alley. And let me say that- Don't give anything away. Nothing to give away. She has the gift. Oh, okay. What are, What are the chances of that? Probably pretty damn good. And the gift is the gift. The gift is you know it's feeling, sensing, hearing, smelling, all that stuff. Spirits. Yeah, because I can smell pasta. I can smell you, and you're a pain <laughs> in the ass. Thank you. But uh, she really has the gift, mm. man, and she knew it when she saw it. Mm. Let's let Roxy Rosie, whatever, whatever. her name is. So we're doing a rough clean on the basement, well, I mean, the bowling alley, and as we're cleaning, um, cleaning on the side of the pants, you know, and um, there's all the dust, so I'm turning around to see where all my, the other girls, co-workers are doing. Now, where are you standing when you're I'm, doing it? I'm here. Okay. We're walking toward the pins. Here. Okay. And I have my other co-worker here. She's vacuuming. Okay, left I'm lane. Here. And she's down here on the I'm left lane. Here. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I turn around and I have my other co-worker where the ladder's at. Where that ladder okay, is right at. before the entrance into the billiard room. Mm -hmm. So as I turn, 
you know, I, I laughed because I seen just the shadow and I turned back again to look at it and it's a little, it's like a seven, between a seven to like nine year old boy, white boy. It's no, not, no ghost, no nothing. It's a boy. It's a Caucasian it's a white boy. boy. Curly, curly Dark hair, hair no, blonde it's hair? it's like blondish, blonde hair. Okay. And the... It's not like a shirt. It's like a shirt, like the kind of like sleeve, you know, like the Mayans and stuff they use. Uh -huh. Okay, it's this way, but it's like a grayish brown, like a potato sack color. Okay. That's the way it's right there. Okay. And it's plain with the, with, with the dust. So I get up and I start walking towards over there just to go see. And he wasn't there, but as I came back from the bathroom, he's right there. And I just turned around and I said, hi. <laughs> That's all I said. Hi. And he was just like doing this. Okay. So, so, so I, I, have, I have questions for you, okay? So when you're here and you see him at the far end mm -hmm. by the billiard room, mm -hmm. now where is your friend? Is she there as well? She's, yeah, she's walking there because she was cleaning the bathroom. Now she's not seeing him? No. But you did? But I did. Okay. And I don't tell him because they get afraid. So she doesn't see him? No. When you start walking toward him, now you think he's real? No, I know he, he wasn't real. Oh, okay. No, I know he wasn't real. And how do you know that? Because there's not a possibility that there's a kid here. Okay, that, that was your only reasoning. It wasn't that you could see through him. Mm -hmm. It was that you feel that there's no child should be there in here. No child should be in here. And two... I usually see stuff okay, around. That was my next question. So you have the gift. <laughs> I have a, the a gift. gift. Okay. So a lot of the people in this book have the gift. Okay. And they're the ones that keep seeing things. And they're really accurate at what they say. Mm -hmm. So when you see him there and you start walking toward the billiard room, mm -hmm. what happened to him? I turned around to, to look at her uh -huh. because, You're, you know. Who was right next to you. And I turned around. He wasn't there. He's gone. Mm -hmm. So I started walking. Okay, walking toward the billiard room. And I wanted to go and tell her, you know, but mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm not going to scare her because we have a long day gotcha. still. Mm -hmm. So I went and I kept looking at the, um, I don't know how do you call it, this right here. I kept looking at this, focusing oh, to see. see anything here. Okay, this is the ball return. You see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what he was doing. So he's playing with the chalk like in the ball that. return. He's like this. And how tall was he? Right here. So he's about... Curly hair. Right here. And this is how I know he had the, 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 the sleeve here mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the shirt. It's not like a shirt, like a button shirt. It's just like a... Just a, like a pullover, pullover kind of thing, shirt. right? Like the Mayans used to wear, uh -huh. wear a long uh -huh. time ago. But it was like a brown, like that, like a... The, the, like gunny sack, you said. Kind of like... Potato sack, like yeah, a yeah. brownish, light brownish, mm -hmm. yeah. So I go over there, and I'm going to go tell him. No, no, okay, let me, let me ask you a question. So, but he was still here. When, when I came here, he wasn't here yet. Then he was gone. He was gone. When, I turned to go see, to, when I turned around to tell her, you know, as she, I said nothing. I started walking. He wasn't here no more. I focused, mm -hmm. but he wasn't here. So okay. I went back, and I was going to tell her, but then I said no. She gets scared. Right. So I said no. So I turned around, and he's right and there. And he's back again. He's now, right she, there. So she walked into the, so the door, here, almost to the bar. And as I went, I said, hi. And I just left. I didn't want to turn back. I got scared. Oh, okay, I got a couple questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about the sound. It's just, remember, what, we were, were going they doing to do construction this. in there? Yeah, they yeah, they're cleaning up and using everything, you know, blowing the stuff around and cleaning. That's the whole thing. It was in the bowling alley. It was their last cleanup. Oh. That's why it's so loud. They're really, really doing a number in oh, there. Oh, okay. Uh, when she says he was doing this, what, what, what was... So what he was doing is, at, at the ball return that, that were built for There Will Be Blood, and they, and they built them specifically to look like back in the 20s, the ball return goes like this, and at the uh, back end of it is like a bowl. And back in the day, within those bowls, they had chalk. Mm -hmm. So the, if you're going to get your fingers in the, ball, the bowling ball, so you use some chalk, you know, to dry your hand... He's standing by that bowl. He's dipping his fingers. That's why she said that he's doing with the dust. He was dipping his fingers in the bowl and going like this and looking at the, the particles falling down. 
to the floor. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have a second part of this too, by the way. Let, let's do that then so I don't mess it up. Yeah. But but it, it, is that incredible? So she's watching. Now, he was solid. Sorry, I'm almost spitting up. She was solid and um, he was solid. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why she said it was real, mm -hmm. that it wasn't an apparition, that, she, right. that, that he looked solid. Okay, let's knew. hear the second one and yeah. then we can discuss it yeah. after. Yeah, Okay. Mm -hmm. I just went high, and I and I just started walking. I was laughing, but in a way, I got scared because I don't know what what was it. I, there's myths, you know. You don't talk to them, you don't ask them or anything. So I just I got stiff, and you know, like right now, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're shaking right now. So that's and I kept looking, I kept looking around, but there was nothing else, nothing else. And so, I keep turning around, and no, there's and he's nothing. He's gone. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think it was? What do you think? Spirit. I mean, because it was actually the face and everything I've seen with nothing, just mm -hmm. bold. Right. But this was the face. This was a kid. I don't recall eyes or anything, but it was just, uh, I know he was Caucasian, but I had the curly hair, but that was it. Do they know it now? Do I told him right now. Okay, yeah, I told him because, okay. no, because um, I seen Joe, like, his, Joe. like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, because Joe's had things happen to him. So that's why and he doesn't. Okay. He didn't believe in the stuff. And now mm -hmm. he's like, oh, my God. No, because I told him something else that I seen. Um, Here? No, in another okay. another okay. apartment. I seen mm -hmm. my friend. Um, we were doing, you know, we were doing the staircase in a, uh, at a hotel. And uh, we were up, upstairs. She was downstairs. And she's like, Rosie, something's bugging me. There's spiders or something. Mm -hmm. And when I turned around, I'm like, oh, and I go, it's probably the dust. She goes, no, it's something here. It was a kid going like this, messing mm -hmm. with her in the back. Wow. I didn't see his face, really. Then he was um, a little, you know, not like a curly, kind of like mm -hmm. comb back. Uh, I don't know how could you call it. We, like a wavy hair, mm -hmm. but he had a red shirt. Mm -hmm. And he had like white, uh, like white lines, mm -hmm. but I didn't get to see what it was. So I said, oh, there's nothing there, you know. You don't have anything. She goes, yeah, because something's doing something to me. And she was like this. And I said, oh, and I seen him. And he was just like doing this to her. At the end of the day, I said, what did you feel? She goes, I felt something was messing with me. What? I said, well, there was a kid behind you. And she's, what did you tell you? I said, yeah, there was a kid behind you. And um, he was wearing a red shirt. What are you talking about? She goes, he was wearing a red shirt with something white stripes, white letters, white numbers. And she got like this and she's like, when my son died, he had a red shirt. Oh, wow. Look at <laughs> goosebumps. That's crazy. And I just, uh, I didn't say anything to her because I don't remember her telling me if her son suicide, committed suicide, oh. or was murdered. But he was between an 11 to 14, 16 year old. So wow. that's what, yeah. So when I, and I told Jose that, and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> So when, um, did you feel any energy? No, this? no. I just, I felt, I didn't feel scared. I mm -hmm. did not feel scared at the beginning because I knew I'd seen him and I, it was nothing wrong. It was no scary, no monster. But as I came back and I said, hi, I felt, I felt something like just like, uh, not cold, but it was just like a stiffness. Like I just, that's why I walked straight. I didn't mm -hmm. even turn around. So. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you got down and you turned nothing, around, nothing, it was yeah, gone. It was gone. Wow. But you could see on the... Uh, things that mm -hmm. it was like moved around because in the morning when I came it wasn't that much yeah what yeah you talk about the chalk the chalk the chalk wasn't that big that mm -hmm. much here mm -hmm. it was a little but it wasn't all the way here because I know it was, we were not going to clean it and I know because I came and looked at this one right and you so, know what yeah, yeah I cleaned this one already so he was just yeah, playing with the child? Yeah. Oh my God. Right here. This was not like that. This was just like little, and it was just here, because I know I, w I went like this. I mm -hmm. wiped it. But you could see that it was just like grabbing it around. That's incredible. All right. You have to explain that because yeah. they're cleaning. Why, why would there be chalk in the bowl? I mean, it, but, nobody's using it, nobody's doing it. No, anything. but that's, that's part of It's always been in there. It's just like when, when you give tours and yeah. people see, they look, oh, they look inside, they see the chalk that's in there oh. and they, that's for the... Okay, that's so the there's some do. in there, so they don't really clean in there because it, there's chalk. Yeah, they don't clean the bowl. I see. They just leave it. But what she was saying was, she goes, look at this one. She went to the other alley that's right next to mm -hmm. it and she looked at the other bowl and there's no chalk on the floor and the bowl was completely like nobody touched it inside with the chalk. Mm -hmm. This one, she said, she looked down and saw all the, 
When she first came in, there was a little bit, so somebody must have done something, she thinks. But uh, after this kid was doing this, when she went back, it was all over the place. And she so, had to clean so it, it wasn't one of the workmen or anybody no. just kind of checking it out. No, because she, when she came in, she saw how much mm -hmm. was there. Right. Then she starts working everything and sees this kid do it. Then goes over there and there's chalk. Oh. So <laughs> it actually physically touched the chalk, hmm. which it can, because if it can do that to you, right, then it can affect in the physical. But it was taking the dust of the chalk and spreading uh, it. Around. I would have liked to have seen that. Actually. And you know what? She she was the coolest too. I wish she would have talked to me about the the broom down the basement. But somebody got to her and said, "Don't talk to to me anymore," just because I think she was worried about uh, her boss or whatever saying, "You know, do your job and don't talk mm -hmm. to that guy yeah. or whatever he wants." Yeah. Right. Well, so. Or they found out about you and. Basically, wanted everybody to stay away from oh, you. I see. Has this happened lately? You mm. know, you, mm -mm. There you. It hasn't. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that, that was our bowling alley. Wasn't that cool? And 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 like I say, really, really nice person too. And but boy, did she have the gift. As so you can she's tell. like Luz. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. You can tell, like, and she's saying details. At a, yeah, the Mayan shirt and the yeah. color of the shirt and all this stuff. Curly hair, blah 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 blah. Love it, man. Yeah. That's specific. Yeah, that's really. I would great. love to see that. Yeah. Uh, spiral staircase is up. The first encounter. I love this. One. Um, was at the top. It was a top landing, right, of the spiral staircase, uh, just before you enter the boys' wing. This is Del Flores. Okay. Okay. So, so let me kind of set this up for you. Don't tip it. I'm not going to tip it. All right. Shut up for a All right. second. All right. So, uh, when you go into the boys' wing, which connects to the spiral stair to the landing, and then the spiral staircase, the boys' wing, the north end of that, that's the door. Remember that Dan Hernandez? It was shaking on him. So. Uh, Right next to that, at the end on the north part of the of the boys' wing, is their study. Was the boys' mm -hmm. study? It was like mm -hmm. their little library. They set that up as Joe Segura and Matt's office. So that's right by that door that was jiggling for Dan, the connecting door to the spiral staircase. So, right outside that office, I think Dell was standing out there on that landing that le that is part of the spiral staircase that goes down. I think that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he says. Okay. We were standing up there. Uh, as you come up the, the stairs, we were right there. We were talking one day with, uh, with my friend right here. And uh, all of a sudden, the door just shuts totally, totally closed. I mean, big time. There's no wind. There's nothing that could have done it. And we just look at each other and say, what happened here? The door just closed now, right there next to us. Now, which door? The door that's leading into the offices back there. Oh, so the top, the top stairs. Yeah, the top stairs. We came all the way up to the top stairs. We're standing right there because the door to come out here is closed. We're waiting for someone to open it, and we're standing. And the door that goes to into the offices it's where is, Joe is. is wide open. Right, that one. It's wide open. We're talking, and then all of a sudden, boom! And there's nobody here. Is everything is dark, and we're just thinking. <laughs> I said, "Well, we don't know what happened." And this morning we were talking to Joe and we were telling him about that story. And, you know, we were saying, you know, what happened. And then all of a sudden I hear a lot of static in my radio, you know, all over the place. And then I go and I take out my radio and I looked at it. I said, wow, that's weird because it's off. And, and, and Joe looks like, oh, my God, his radio was off. Everybody's, you know, their radio was off, but we, everybody heard it. All three of us heard the noise, you know, the static noise really bad. So that's, that's happened today, today, this morning. <laughs> now, how is that even possible? Yeah, the, the, it's just not, there's no possibility for it. Okay. Uh, I think this, is, this has been the, um, the first place, I guess, in my life where, where ca I can actually attest that there's some forces beyond our comprehension you know at mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. uh, before I, I, I didn't know that when the thing happened with the door that's when I, I believe that you know that there's something moving around or something you know because he shut the door and then today for that to happen it just totally you know uh, uh, proved to me that there's got to be something now have you have you ever had anything like this happen before no 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 I, 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 I mean I heard people talking about stuff and I always say, oh, okay, well, maybe, you know, they were imagining or they were thinking maybe, you know, about it. Maybe that's what happened. But in our case, I mean, we were not even talking about that. Right. When the door shut, I mean, it was totally, you know, out of nowhere. 
And then this morning we were talking about that episode, and and sure enough, the radio happens, and then I looked at it and go, oh well, that's probably the same thing. So when you were were you talking about that incident with the door when the radio went off? Yeah. When when we were we were just talking about that and all of that, all of like coincidences, and all of a sudden on the radio. And then I went and looked. I said, "Wait a minute! I, I, I don't remember having my radio on." And I opened it. Sure enough, it wasn't. It wasn't on. What do you think it was? I I think I don't know if there's a spirit. I mean, actually, obviously there are spirits. I mean, you, you know, in the spirit world, obviously, obviously there are because I do believe in that. You know, so I believe uh, maybe you know they heard the conversation, or he or she or whatever heard the conversation that we were talking, and they were probably saying, "Hey, shh, yes, I'm here." Or yes, we are here, you know, mm-hmm. so that you won't think that maybe it was the wind that closed the door or whatever. It's just so that you won't think that this is a, it was a coincidence. Here you go, boom. So yeah, pretty crazy, pretty pretty interesting, pretty interesting way to uh to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I, I, you know, the spiral staircase at yeah. the top there. Yeah. First of all. There, there are no windows up there, so there is no, there's no way to get a draft. I mean, I, I don't even know how you would get a draft no, to close no, that door. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's. I listen again. I was up there a long time. Yeah, there's no, there's no movement of air no. at all in that no, area. But, but I, it did remind me of. I think there was a story that we didn't do. There's so many stories that we just picked out certain ones. But Luz had one where a door slammed on her. She was out in the minstrel gallery, and that door slammed. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I think it might have been Chad, I'm not sure, in the gun room where that door slammed. He said it was like a a weight lifter, a power lifter. Slammed that door. He said, if my hand was able to cut it right Mm. off. And so it can't happen in there. And Mm -hmm. there there isn't any wind inside that house. Forget it. There's no wind. But this one with the radio, I'm so curious because, you know, how do you affect an electronic instrument even when it's off? Thank you. It doesn't make sense. Thank they you. They probably just Finally. they probably just Thank heard something. Ah, uh, shut it up! It was a, no. a rat or uh, something. Yeah, <laughs> a rat crawling on there, <laughs> turning it so on. So, how many people heard it? How many people heard it? <laughs> heard it? Yeah. What did those two who were standing there talking? Both of them heard it. Yeah. And then he went and checked, and it was off. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Joe's right there. If they're staying at Lanny, Joe's in his room there. He probably goes, I don't want to hear it. I don't want it because Joe didn't want anything yeah, yeah. to do with this stuff. Right. But what, but I, what I also love about this is these are guys that came to Greystone not knowing it was haunted. Mm-hmm. They have a job to do. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the word might have gotten out. Hey, this place is kind of crazy. And you go, whatever, you know. And they do what they got. Then stuff like this happens. That's why he says it, it now made sense to me that there are other you know, right, spirits on the right. other side that can that can connect or affect you. you yeah, know? that's crazy. I love that. And, and I did see another, I saw a, a television show recently uh, where this woman was going into a haunted building and her walkie was going, <laughs> and she's like, then she gets on there and said uh, to the other person in the show, are you trying to get a hold of me? No. And she'd walk through it and would keep doing mm, it. So but hers wasn't off. No, hers was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was off. That's why this was when he told me someone, I've got to talk to this guy. Yeah, that was a good Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Next up is uh, Maria Thorpe. Um, it's 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 an interesting story. Very, very short, but I, I wanted to play it because uh, it, there's of the stories that are going to follow it. Oh, okay. So Maria Thorpe uh, was a ranger, I think, at one point. Uh, she was also part of the camp, I think, the, the Catskills. Sometimes people do that. They, they'll be in the cat skills, cat, cat skills camp, and then they graduate into being a ranger because mm-hmm. they want to be around oh, there, oh. all that stuff. Um, and Maria had several stories in, 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 that are in the book. Uh, we just chose this one because of the spiral staircase and how it corroborates a lot of things. So let's let her tell the story, and we'll chat about it that afterwards. Okay. So I was there when we, we walked into the spiral staircase. Of course, that spiral staircase time, you know, it was very musty because there was, you know, uh, you know, no one was, you know, there were rarely people in there. I mean, there were people in there for filming and stuff, but it wasn't really open regularly. Um, so, um, yeah, we were there one night and Brooke and I, I think it was, that walked in. I mean, there were a couple of us who walked in to the spiral staircase area and the... Uh, chandelier that hangs pretty high up. I mean, you would have to like, you know, 
yeah, you know, one could actually lean over and mm-hmm. actually push it. You mm-hmm. know, it was like swinging back and forth. I mean, it wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't just like you know, mm-hmm. like a little breeze caught or anything. Not that hey, a breeze could catch that thing, but mm-hmm. it was it was swinging. Yeah. Definitely she she that. she told me that it was uh, uh, the one time she went in, and I think you were involved in that as well. The way she described it was it was like really spinning around. She said like it was like what oh yeah. She, I mean, it wasn't just like it was going back and forth. It was spinning around. And, right. Oh, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. That's what I mean. It was like swinging. I mean, it was like swinging around, and yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like someone could have pushed it. In other words, uh-huh. you know, you would have really had to like taken it and swung it, you know. So you, your story was that you saw you saw that chandelier swinging in there. Were, I did. Were you with yes. Brooke at that time? I was with Brooke. Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Because yeah. she, she yeah. Was... and we saw it. We saw it swinging around. Wow. Like it was definitely like swinging. <laughs> like hard. <laughs> and and it wouldn't have been anybody and, in your group, right? Because you were all together. We were all together. Yeah, there was no one who was like ahead of us. You know, we all came in together. Plus, where that was, um, in you know where where it was hanging, uh-huh. somewhat no one could have leaned over to push it. They would have had to have stood on the actual rail uh-huh. and to do it. You know what I mean? Like, no one could have actually leaned over and done that. Yeah, and, and from what I understand, the way it was swinging, even if you were to be able to get, let's say, a, like a broomstick and push it or something, you still couldn't have made right. it go the way it was spinning, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was it was it like a pendulum, or was it spinning around? Well, uh, we'll, we'll have Brooke tell us what she what happened. We can she, we she, can she, jump to Brooke before Luz if you want, so we can hear Brooke because she was with. Well, well yeah. Some, why we do one. that? Because that's uh, Brooke was what, with her. what Maria just said was was with her on that one, and uh, yeah, let, let's do that. Okay. Um, uh, it, it's the the chandelier is hanging from way up there, and it comes down to the center, and it's heavy. So, again, like she said, not even even if there was a breeze, everybody goes to the breeze thing because they can't. It's a justification. You can't figure right, out how that's right, even possible. Right. But no breeze could could move this no, lamp. No, no, it's, no. It's big. Yeah. It's heavy. Well, as long as we did Maria's, let's jump to to lose and uh, I mean to uh, Brooke, Brooke, and then we'll come back. To Can Luz. we do that? Sure. Okay. Let's right. go to Brooke. Okay. I would say the absolute best one that I have was in August 1994. It was after a final performance for Mm -hmm. Catskills. Mm -hmm. The counselors would like to stay back. And after everybody would leave, we'd lock the park and everything. We would come into the house and... Are you with a ranger? We're with um, a ranger at the time. Um, He was also a a counselor, too. Elon. And then our camp coordinator, Glenn Gregory. And then about eight others of us. Mm -hmm. So there were ten of us total. Okay, so we're in the house. um, And we're playing just like a hide-and-go-seek game. And then the one game finishes, and then we all wind up walking on the other side and we're about to pick the, the leader mm-hmm. to, to play the next game. So we're over here. Up in the land boys wing. We're right uh, one story above the two stories above the bowling alley. Mm-hmm. One story above the movie theater. Now this is locked. Okay. So I can't get into it. Okay, well that's where we were. Okay, so you're on the landing here toward the spiral staircase. So we're on the top landing here, right at the top of the spiral staircase. Mm-hmm. There are no windows, at least none that could be opened or were opened. And there's a chandelier. I'm assuming it's still there? Mm-hmm. There's a chandelier right in the middle. So the 10 of us... And again, every single person who came into the house is now still with us right there. And we're all standing around the banister and we're discussing who's going to lead the next game. 
And then all of a sudden, Glenn says, oh my God, look at that. And he points up to the chandelier. And now this chandelier is not just swaying, okay? It is violently circling. And we were all dead silent. All 10 of us just stood there for about one, two, three, four, five seconds in complete silence until slowly it just stopped. It slowed down the, the spin. Mm -hmm. So it was, but I'm talking violently, like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Really? And then it slowed and we were still staring at it until right before our eyes, it just stopped. Just like that. It just stopped. And then it, it, it's when it stopped, it stopped. It literally it, stopped it still. Just boom. Stopped. It didn't like slow down and continue to sway. It was spinning violently and then slowly spinning in a circle. And then the circle slowed down more and then stopped. That was it. And we just stood there staring at it. We we're all silent for another couple seconds. And at that point, we just left the house. So this wasn't a thing of, I, I'd heard this story from you before, but it sounded like to me, it was a Catskills fun and somebody did that before you got in that room. It's impossible so. because we were all standing there. Okay, we were standing there talking and it's right above us. And there are 10 of us who all saw the same thing. And then he says, oh my God, look at this. And then he looked up. Now, again, there's no window for any kind of wind. And again, wind wouldn't cause it to spin like this. There are no wires that are attached to it that anybody could pull. Um, again, no, not one person was omitted from the group. All 10 of us were there. And all of a sudden, I mean, if it would have been swaying beforehand, we would have noticed it when we walked in. Correct. It's not that high up because when you're on the top of the landing here, it's like right here. It I mean, it's really good. not that high up. So you would have seen it if it's spinning in front of you. But that was the, the number one story to this day that had I not seen it with my own eyes, there's no, I, I don't know if I would have believed it. I mean, I can't even think of any kind of explanation. That's, that's the thing. I mean, there's absolutely no explanation that I can think of for that at all. So, I mean, that will always go down as the, the story that I cannot explain at all. Uh, mainly because of the fact that there were nine other people with me. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, but you can't, how could you explain the woman outside the window? I mean, true. What true. you've gone through are, it's pretty incredible. But those, yeah, and that one I was alone. The other one, I had two other people with me who witnessed the same thing. But this one, you know, there were 10 of us all looking at the same thing, and we all felt the same way afterwards. And I, you know, I, I've always been comfortable in here, you know. Um, but that night, I remember after, I was like, okay, I, <laughs> we're going to leave now. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want us to be here. We're going to leave. So she said when she walked in, they didn't notice it swinging right. in a circle. They didn't notice it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, until somebody said, well, look up or something like that. So none right. of them, it could have been swinging when they walked in. I'm not saying it's it's impossible because it could, it could have been swinging if oh. they didn't notice it until somebody said, look up. Yeah, I mean, it's way up there. But they, were they at the bottom? Were they on the theater level? Well, I think she, that's, well, she was taught, we were, were walking from the boys' wing into that door oh, okay. to go through. So they were right across from it. Yeah. So, so how would were, they not, I, I don't understand, if there's 10 people well, and it's right there, how do you not see it spinning? And no, then all it, of a sudden. It, it couldn't be that way. It had to be that they went down the staircase, whatever, to that second yeah. landing outside the theater. And then Glenn said, oh my God, look, look up. up. Because yeah. they wouldn't say look up because you're looking straight across right. when you enter. Right. But. This Brooke is the one, like she said, she's the one who saw the the apparition of the woman in white or the girl in white mm -hmm. outside the door, the West Court door, mm -hmm. and also her, the the uh, the gate shaking. Remember the chain and the gate, and and her mm -hmm. boyfriend at the time, mm -hmm. Brennan, was running, yep. and she went with him. Right. So uh, she said she had some three three really good stories. Well, this one's and, bizarre. I, yeah. Even if because I've been up there, so 
with that when you're standing at the top there, you could reach that with a broom, but you can't get it to spin. No, you can't do not it. Not at all. Because I tried it. it, by the way. Oh, you did? I tried. I, couldn't I was going to say, have you ever tried? And it was, it was a little sketchy. Well, because you're, lean, you're leaning out over that. I mean, that. you're leaning way over if you're, on, if you're on YouTube, you, I'll put a picture up for that. But yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. It's, no, no, it's no, so no. narrow. Yeah. And it's, it's very steep. Yeah, it's really steep. I don't, I don't think they have the uh, OSHA laws or whatever, you know, for building <laughs> stairs. Right, It's right. just really steep. Yeah, yeah. It goes way up. And and it's, it's you know, not only uh, steep and everything, but it's kind of creepy. And you go like, you know, what if I lean over and I get a little shove with it? And I go down, oh, good you know. Point. Yeah, well, you know, then for, join us. You know? Boy, yeah. They, What'd you say? Nothing. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever. The guys that are a little skittish. Yeah. 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 For I, you, like yourself. I wouldn't be worried about it, but <clears throat> obviously you are. Let's um what an idiot. Let's jump to lose. She has a, a same story. I was gonna go to her next, but let's Yeah, yeah. yeah so after. so uh Maria. remember Luz had twenty four stories for me and this Jeez. we've probably done in this series, we'll do probably like eight altogether wow. or something like that. This is one, and uh, she was a ranger, mm -hmm. and she is with a new recruit, I believe, a new ranger, uh, Tyrone. So she's going to give him a walkthrough. Oh, okay. All right. And, and, I'll, I'll hit that in a sec. Yeah. I just had another note. Mm -hmm. Who in the heck plays hide-and-seek in a mansion like that? That is creepy. But, but think about it. Creepy. Think about it. These, Brooke at that time was probably 18, 15 in that area. They're just thinking. Oh, she's not fifteen. She's well. I mean, she said it was her boyfriend at that time. She was. A, she was a. Counselor. She wasn't. She was not a counselor. Oh, at that she time. was in the cat's. I think she was in the. Oh, I thought she. Now was she a might have been one of the. I forgot what. They well, call regardless, them. even if they're twenty, they're running around the mansion at yeah. night. It yeah. is no, really no, I, scary. I, and, I, and I think I think maybe Glenn Gregory at that time was probably twenty, twenty-one yeah. or something like that. One of those. But but I think Brooke was a little younger, and uh, I just think that that at that age. You go, oh, come on, nothing's ever yeah. happened to me. You, know? you imagine going into the murder room when it's pitch dark and you're waiting for and you hear people walking? No, no man. May or may not be the It wouldn't be the murder room for me. It would be down <laughs> in the basement. Uh, You'd want to be down in the basement? No, it would be. I, I wouldn't want to be oh, down oh, in the oh. basement or oh. up in the attic. Yeah, no. Or it's just there's some really creepy no. places yeah. in there, especially when it's dark. By yeah. the way, I just saw a video when I was getting ready for the show, a video that I had taken, and we're not going to show this, but of me having driven up, I was going to open up that morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like 4.50 or 5 o'clock in the morning because I knew I had to open up. And I drive up and I turn on my phone. And it's like all black. And I'm looking at my computer going like, what is, what is this thing? And then it's me. And I'm saying out loud, there's a light on the mansion. Mm. I got to go in and see where it is. And then I went up the door and I say, now it's off. And then I used an inappropriate word for the show of and course. say, I've got to go in. Really? Yeah. And I and I went in by mm. myself in the dark. Yeah. I don't really have a very good flashlight, whatever yeah. that was, a little thing. And boy, it's scary. It's just really scary. Oh, it's totally scary. Let, let's hear Lou's. Okay. Sorry. Lou's, here you are. So, you know the... The chandelier that hangs in the middle. Let's go have a look. Yes, the, the chandelier that hangs in the middle of the uh, rec room. Mm -hmm. So we had a new person, we had a new guy, and I was showing him around. And I was going to. This is the staircase that goes up and down, right? right? That one? Okay. So I was showing him through the house. Mm -hmm. We came up this way. And then, you know, through the boys' wing. So I used to have a latch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I brought him up here, showed him the boys' room and the little light study thing. I was, undid the latch, opened the door. You've seen that chandelier. Mm -hmm. It's like solid brass. Mm -hmm. That thing was swinging side to side. And you were the only one in this house? Tyrone and I. And I where was, was he? He was right with me. I was showing him through the house, and I was going to show him the rec wing, open the door. There's no way that there's, whoa. Oh, sorry. There's no way that, I mean, you feel it. Mm -hmm. It's stale. Mm -hmm. and even if you open the door, it's not going to cause that burst of air to make that brass chandelier swing. Right. It was just swinging. So I said, 
do you see what I see? I just wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, the chandelier is moving. I said, okay, we'll just come back later. Really? And I closed the door. Yeah, and we closed the door, walked back. And I was just like, I had never seen that. That thing's so heavy, you know? Do you know Brooke Pacone? Yeah. She's going to be here at 1 o'clock to talk to me. Okay. And one of her stories, she's already told me, is the chandelier swinging. <laughs> um, you know, for skeptics, yeah, yeah, it's like it's really easy uh, on on that where it's swinging back and forth. It's really easy to yeah. do that if you have something, but if it's just the two of them walking in there, yeah, it there's, I mean, you know, and it it, it does take a while probably for it to slow down. But uh, Brooks is ridiculous that it's circling, circling, slowing yeah. down, then stops. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. yeah. But this one could have been done. But no who, wind. Who, who would have No, been? no. There was nobody. If there's nobody else there. And Luz, yeah. Luz was a ranger at the time. Yeah. So there was. She and she's was taking no, this new guy, Tyrone, who's now a brand mm -hmm. new ranger, into the house. I'm going to show you Inducting the mansion. Inducting him. Yeah. And he w walk into that room and suddenly that's swinging. Do you see what I see? I say, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Greystone. He had. To, I'm, I think I remember Tyrone. I don't know how long he lasted. But uh, yeah, that that's. It's a great story, man. And and so, you know, we know that Luz has the gift. Mm -hmm. Were they doing that for Luz because she had the gift? Well, they did it for Brooke, who doesn't. And all the other 10, now maybe somebody in there had the gift, I don't know, uh, you know, with the 10 that were right. there. But um, right. And Maria Thorpe, does she? I don't know. I don't think it matters at that point. I think it was somebody or a spirit just trying to mm -hmm. get your attention. That's mm -hmm. it, man. Just get your attention. Well, the, the next ones, uh, the next stories. Yeah. Uh, they all have the same paranormal experience. Now, I, I know why we had uh, Brooke before Luz was because Luz is up again. So you didn't okay. want it back to back, but yeah. it's, it's yeah. about yes. the same story. I thought that would okay. be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this one's uh, about Luz. What, is, um, what does it say? It, it's about the same paranormal experience. Um, oh, okay. The, the floating. Oh, <laughs> Now we're getting into it, ladies and yes, gentlemen. Ladies yes, and gentlemen. we are. Yes, we're getting into it. Next now. three stories. This is come on, man. Join me. This, these are the stories that I love, man. And I wish it happened to me. This, I mm -hmm. wish it happened to me. What if it did? Would you jump behind Casey again, our sister, or would you? I'm just curious how you'd react. You say that all the time. Just curious. I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Glad this isn't show 19. <laughs> so. Uh, huh? You're glad this isn't show 19? This is show oh, 19, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, you yeah, lousy. yeah. You'll miss it. Yeah, I won't. All right. So, um, this this begins our little, uh, what we say? For, our, 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 our foyer. trio. Foyer. Yeah, our trio foyer. of oh, yeah. uh, what's, what's going to take place yeah, don't on, on these stairs. So, let's have Luz tell her story. Okay. And we'll chat, and then we'll continue with others. Okay. We were in the theater, and I looked up, and I saw someone coming down the spiral staircase, and I... And tell me what they look like. So... Were they solid or transparent? It was solid, mm -hmm. but again, it was like a shadow. Mm -hmm. Like a shadow, and, and so I said, there was just someone coming down the staircase. And Chris was like, well, there's no one else in here. And, but it, it disappeared. Like it came around, it came down, and then it was gone. So I said, well, it may have gone all the way downstairs or it may be in here with us. You know, I don't know. So Chris never saw it or no. whoever was with you never saw they it. They didn't see it. But you did. Yes. This is why you have the Cause, gift. Because okay. I was, see, I was apprehensive. The, the movie theater always gives me like that chill up my spine. Mm -hmm. And so I was literally like, you know, like here's the walkway. And there's the door. Um, I was kind of like, yeah, so this is a movie theater. <laughs> and out of the corner of my eye, I could see someone coming down the stairs. Were they walking or floating? Floating. They never walk. And did they have all their legs and everything or half? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they, they don't walk. They float. Mm -hmm. And it's... Like the like the shadow guy, there was no you know the bobbing of the head when you walk. Mm -hmm. It was just a float. It was just floating. Wow. So she's talking about the the uh, 
the bobbing of the head when she was at the uh, grand entry um, with Sumner, who was her uh, um, ranger partner, mm -hmm. and it was filming. And so he went to go to the to, right. to do all this stuff, and so she waited there and, and says Sumner, Sumner, and he like he's what? But she goes, he was floating. Right. So she's talking about that the same thing. I this see. guy was floating. Who who was Chris? Chris. Oh, oops, sorry about that. He's the greatest dude. I hope you're you're well, Chris. I haven't talked to him for a long time, but he was just I, I love this guy, yeah. and uh, he was a ranger at that time. And what she's talking about coming out of the theater is a landing there. So up above, you have a landing that be begins the spiral staircase that goes down. Actually, it doesn't, doesn't wrap around. It goes like this and just comes down like that. Um, there is a landing area coming out of the theater as well. That's, that's back when the theater was dilapidated and mm. just beat up and everything. So she it also was kind of creepy anyway because it was so beat up. So she's coming out onto that landing, and right when you come out that landing, looking up to your right, that's the staircase coming down. That's where oh, she saw the. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, that was that was fascinating. Is it awesome? Now we have come on Alexin, Alex, Alex, who from east to west. He always used to say that to me. <laughs> You're the best from east to west. He's a character. Um, he talks about this now. Alex is a character man and a good guy, really good guy. And um, so he's going to tell you, he they went there to fix something in that area by that landing there. And he's with another worker who left the city not long after that. I think he, he didn't, he, and he was there for quite some time. Felix, really, really okay. nice guy. So let's see what Alex had to say. Okay. What happened to him? This is crazy. From east to west. Oh, wow. We're moving something downstairs in that area where the bowling alley is at. So we took it downstairs. The guy who works with me is no longer here. His name is Felix. Uh, Felix is always talking about, yeah, this place is haunted and all this stuff. So as he's saying these things, all of a sudden we see from the top steps, we're in the bottom, looking up. Uh, we see half torso, half of a person, just all white, you know, coming down the steps. So we stop, we both look, it stops, it looks at us. It looked, could have been a woman, I'm not sure. And as he, I can't believe it, I can't f believe it now. He starts saying that, he starts freaking out. That's when I'm looking at him because I'm, my attention is now drawn to him. And I look back, both of us look back, it's gone. Now let me ask you a question. No. Coming down the stairs, was it floating or walking? No, floating, because it doesn't have a okay. bottom, no legs, just upper torso, hands, head, and, yeah. And it seemed like a female, because they had a lot of, yeah. Like flowing? F yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. And, and, uh, Felix saw it as well. Yeah, he's the one who pointed it. Kind of ruined it because we all wanted to have my eyes on this thing, and you know, I don't want to lose my attention. But when he starts jumping around, freaking out, so I'm looking at him. Look at this guy jumping around, and he wants to run up. He wants to run up because he can't run up because he's there or she's there. So he's got nowhere to go. She's looking at where else? Can, where can we go? Where can we run to? He started actually going towards the boiler room. Is it the boiler room down there? Oh, uh, there's the theater. The theater. The theater's on yeah, that that's, landing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then that's that's where he started running to, or wants to run to. And that's when it was gone. It was just gone. No sound, no nothing. The, the person did stop and was enjoying Felix's jumping around. So that, that apparition yeah. stopped halfway? Yeah, when he started jumping around, oh, why didn't you see this and all this? And the stops looked at us. We're looking at him. He's looking at us or she. And that's when he's really freaking out. And I started looking at him. Look up. It's gone. And he or she, you couldn't tell of hair or what? Hair, what some it? kind of a, what do these people wear when they go to church? The oh, a veil, a veil kind of thing? thing yeah. Okay. Or a scarf, like a, like a white scarf thingy. And a white 
Everything was, yeah, white, bright, bright. It was like almost like a light lit up. Mm. It was, a, you know, you couldn't make out the facial stuff. And what time of day or night was this? Uh, it was getting towards the end of the day, like 2.30, almost 3. I had to get something down there. And, and how long ago was this? Oh, this is, Felix has been gone for how many years now? More than six years. More than, More six, than six years. years. That and was it. And how did you, when did you, did you feel any energy coming from it at all? Did you get any goosebumps from it? Uh, yeah, because we're just scared, you know. Okay. We just didn't know what, what was going on. But nothing, you know, going through you or anything mm -hmm. like that, no. We're just glad the person stopped. Now we can proceed on getting out <laughs> of the steps. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm not, yeah. I'm any not comments on that? Up. No, I mean, I saw it once and that was it. I'm glad actually Felix was there because it stopped after that jumping around stuff. Or else the person seems like was going to come and visit us and you know, okay. talk to us or whatever. Wow. Is that, you know Alex. I do. And he's and a straightforward he, guy. He wouldn't make this up. And he no. would never, he didn't, according to my notes, he didn't even want to come forward to talk no. to you. No, he didn't. He's he didn't. very reticent about Yeah, yeah. This experience, but that's yeah. an incredible experience. Yeah, man. I remember him, oh boy, a long time ago when he was the way he described Felix hopping around. Yeah. It was so funny. Yeah, yeah. Because the guy, poor guy, was scared to death. Well, remember, Felix is the guy who's down in the basement with Mario at the electrical panel trying to fix it, and, and they're hearing scratching coming oh, towards. Oh yeah. Him. Mario's going, "You're cool, man. Just fix it. Just finish get, it. Let's, let's finish get it, it done." He can, Mario's going, "That's off, man. That's really off. Just finish it." And he's going, "Should we get out? Just fin then there's bam. He goes, "Now we should go." And then they got they got out. Poor Felix, he's gone and, through hell. And he was really, uh, I, 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 I could Did you say, know him? Yes, superstitious, mm. but a really sweet, nice guy. But boy, oh boy, uh, he, I didn't know he mm. was that freaked out about the paranormal because I never had a chance to interview him because he'd already left the city. Right. But uh, this poor guy had two major things happen to him that just flipped him out. No wonder he left the city. Oh my gosh. Probably couldn't take it anymore. Poor guy. Yeah. That's tough. It's Is that tough. awesome? Uh, God, I well, if you that. need one more, we have another one. Do we one. have another? Mr. Steve Clark. Oh, come on. Welcome to the home of the haunted. Oh, right? Or the home for Ranger, the haunted. Officer Clark. Yes, Ranger Clark, uh, our buddy yep, of our, all buddies. Yep. And uh, you can trust what Mr. Clark says because he is the yes, real deal. He is, and, and this one takes the cake. This takes the cake. That's why it's last. And he and he has the gift. And the gift, by the way, the person that he's going to be discussing also has the gift big time. Is like a is like a psychic medium as well. So Steve met Rob, and Rob he's said, he's an investigator for the. Paranormal research, yeah, organization? yeah, yeah. He has his own organization, oh. and and boy, is he good, man! I wanted to do a just a show with Rob, with all his investigations, just at Greystone. I mean, he would do his notes. We'd be like ten pages long, specific oh, wow. notes. This was said. This was the reaction. All the things. Hmm. He, he's just. I'm surprised great. you're not a member of his organization. Well, I'm surprised you asked me that, you hmm. big dummy. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Let's hear Steve. Let's hear Steve. Let's hear Mr. Clark. Yes. Ranger Clark. Yes. By the way. Senior Ranger. Mm -hmm. Well, Rod and I. Rob. Right. Rob. Yep. Rob Lodarski. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're we were here, and we were just literally in the right theater here talking. And that's when we saw that apparition float down the staircase here. Um, literally, it was a, like I said, a male servant. He had a, uh, like a chef jacket on. We could see color. We couldn't see through him. But he had no legs. He was just a torso. And, and when you saw him, Rob saw the same thing, right? Yeah. You both looked and saw the same thing. We compared. No, we were like, oh my God. I said, you, should, you know, we were just so shaken. I'm like, we just, I'm like, I'm like, it was a male, right? Yeah. And, 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 and I said, he had like a, a jacket on, like a chef coat on, you know. And, uh, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And we're, we're comparing notes, make sure we saw the same thing. And then we're like, well, let's go find him. You know, so then we ran downstairs, thinking like he would just be laying around or doing something down here. And of course, there was nothing. <clears throat> so when he came down the stairs, Stephen, he had he had no legs. 
right? Right. And he was solid? Solid, you couldn't see through him. It was kind of sandy blonde hair. Mm -hmm. um, not real well kept, like short, it was a little long, you know. Um, but, you know, probably late, early 30s, you know. I mean, we saw the guy. So, so when he was coming down the staircase up above by the theater, and he's coming down the staircase and you and Rob see him. And he was moving pretty fast. I mean, he wasn't just like slow. I mean, it was like, whoosh. wow. So, but you saw him enough to go, he, didn't you say something like, he, and you said like he had a certain coat on and Rob said with stripes or something like that? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, it was like a white coat, but it had blue piping. You know, the mm -hmm. blue seam here and mm -hmm. one here was blue. Hmm. And we could see, it was, and it looked like a jacket that a servant would wear. You know, one of those jackets like a busboy would wear. I used to wear them as a busboy when I worked at the casinos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just a sloppy looking jacket. You know, it was kind of big and <clears throat> came down to about here. I mean, it was kind of long, but then it just stopped at the jacket. And there's nothing below the jacket. Yeah, it just was like floating. God, it's crazy. Yeah. But like I tell people, your brain just can't assimilate that mm -hmm. because it's trying to figure out, number one, what you saw and that it wasn't a whole thing. And it just, your brain just kind of freezes up. Mm -hmm. You're like, eh. <laughs> oh my gosh unbelievable is that the greatest i, I don't even know what to say God, I, I mean fantastic you know steve so yes, you know i do straightforward and telling and 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 uh is there more with steve or is that no that's because what what i did was i got a hold of rob ladarsky mm -hmm. and asked him said hey um steve's gonna be in in the book and we want to talk about uh, that that incident that happened with you uh, at the staircase there. And he was, I said, could you? He was busy, whatever. So he sent me an email, quite a, quite a, a detailed email, as what he does. Mm -hmm. And he was very specific and it corroborated everything Steve said. Saw the same thing, although Rob felt different things than Steve, mm. um, because he has the gift. He really has the gift. Steve right. feels stuff, but Rob is like a psychic medium, and. Um, could almost feel what the guy was, what he was thinking and wow. going through, and 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 the fact that um, there's another story that that uh, again we only have so much time, but that was out. Uh, I believe I don't think we're doing it. I don't think we're doing it with Steve Clark, where he uh, was walking around and um, some people. He said, telling this couple, y y "We've got to go now. We're going to close the park." They said, well, "We're looking for our friend." And he goes, well, okay, well, you got to find, well, he's got to be around here somewhere. They, well, you got to, Steve walks out of the courtyard and the stairs that are there that remember we, we had, was it Is Ralph? this in the next, on the 20, I show 20? I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't think so. Okay. But uh, Steve walked out of the courtyard and saw a guy sitting on those stairs Remember that Ralph oh, yeah. was going to go in and did, to get his blueprints and went, I'm not going mm -hmm, in that. Mm -hmm. Those stairs, Steve sees somebody and he goes, oh, here he is. And when he did that, the guy disappeared. Oh, wow. And he said it was the same guy who was inside the uh, oh. the spiral staircase with the pipe. That, that guy, oh. sandy hair, looked like the same guy. He was on his break. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Taking a break. Wow. Isn't that the greatest, oh, though, man? That was fantastic. I mean, that's, you know, this is what I loved about doing this series was that you get to hear them say it. I, the I, book is fabulous because yeah. you get so many stories, and it's it's what they say. It's in the book. But to hear their voices. Uh, it's very it, special. It really is. And, and it's it's just, God, I just, I'm, I'm really excited that we did this. Yeah. I'm really happy that we did this. I am, too, because this literally is the first time I've ever heard the voices. Yeah. Because, like I said, we, right. we you recorded them. Mm-hmm. We tr I had them transcribed, but it's just a, you know, right. basically a service. So yeah. I don't, I go here, I tran have them transcribed, send them to Cleet. And it's like, he gets them and he starts writing. I, I didn't even know what they're saying. So this is yeah. Yeah. fantastic to yeah. hear all this. And I love hearing it again and, and yeah. hear, hearing these You've people. You've heard these yeah. a million times. Yeah. And these are my friends. A lot of them are my friends yeah. and really close friends. I and, do miss Steve. Yeah. 
and Chris, yeah. his husband, and yeah, and, and just Dan. The, the greatest people, Dan, yeah. all these people. Yeah. I just I miss them because I never get to talk to them anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's but to scary. be able to hear their voices, like yeah. Chris, it's fun, and, and and all these people to come back together again for this series is really yeah. special. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. kind of fun. All right, where, where are we now? What's... We're at the sound of the week, my oh, friend, and this one's end. a fascinating one. Is it? Yes, it is. Uh oh, I think I know what it is. It's Elva. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Here's what we're going to do. Um, this is a story that... Uh, well, do you want to play the, the bit first, just so we can hear it, and then we'll describe what it is, play it again so they hear? They won't... I just want to hear yeah. it cold. Yeah, I can just play this, and, and then we'll we'll talk after. You want to do that? P- play this... Well, are, are you Your conversation first? I was just going to play a sound bite. Okay, play the sound, then I'll play... Because I yes. talked to, El, uh, to... Sorry, to Velma yesterday to really find out what is this all about and velma was part tell because it was, they just heard elva yeah so velma was uh one of the, she and andrea were the main crew that oversaw the people that cleaned not only graystone but a lot of the city for a company so um when uh what you're going to hear she's going to explain to you and then we'll chat about it after she talks. But she's going to explain to you what uh, yeah. what happened because it's bizarre. All right, we'll do the sound bite, and then you can she okay. can explain it. Okay, check this out. Mm-hmm. It sounds so innocuous and so like, well, what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah. Okay, pretty average sound. What would you think? Not that a big deal. What would you think it is? Well, it's it sounds like it sounds very familiar. Yeah, it sounds like a cup and saucer yeah. or something very simple on a tray or bumped. I yeah. don't know. It's it's not a. I don't understand it. Yeah. So and, and it sounds like to me like when you go to Denny's or something like that. The the heavy, yeah. When the you heavy gave when you gave me this sound, yeah. mm-hmm. remember I called you and I said. Uh, I don't understand. What am I doing? What what right. is what are we playing for this show? It doesn't <laughs> right. make sense to me. Right, right. So, um, uh, it, it's it's her. I have to set this up. It's her taking a video, a ten second video if, on YouTube. You see it. Yeah, and and uh, Elva's there, and she just goes past Elva. And there's a reason why she does this ten second video, and we're going to find out why. And if we don't understand, I'll explain a little even more. This was the conversation I had with her yesterday, okay? On my Snapchat. So I recorded it for, for like, I don't know, two seconds, and I let go of the button. But I accidentally replayed the sound, and I was like, what was that? And I'm like, oh, I just recorded this, but I deleted it. So she's like, well, that was weird. And I'm like, yeah. So then I did, re- I, I grabbed my Snapchat um, app again, and I recorded the 10 seconds and then um, we replayed it and then all that noise that you have is what I recorded. So, and so okay, go ahead. Sorry. And that day, I after I heard that, I looked out the window. There was nobody around. There was no workers. Um, it was just Elva and I and, and, and all the house because it was before they opened the the park to the public. I can't remember the time. Yeah, yeah, 10 o'clock usually. So that that's that's what happened. So so you you recorded it the first time when you recorded was just to just to do it because of the room? Yes. I recorded it because I'm like, oh, you know, let me record the bathroom so I can keep it as a memory. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just but then, but then I let go of the button, like, to play it, and um, that's when El was like, you know, I accidentally hit the play button, and El was like, what was that? You know, and I'm like, oh, I just recorded this, and so that's when I said, let me record again, you know, and then it sounds like dishes, it sounds like tools. Yeah. So, so the first time there wasn't anything. You just made a mistake on the recording. And the second time you heard the dishes thing. No, the fir- the those like two seconds of the first time. Uh huh. I that's what I accidentally hit play on, and Elba is like, she said, "What was that?" 
And I'm like, oh, I just recorded something. But I deleted it. So then that's when I say, let me record again. And that was like the full 10 seconds. Right, right. Yeah, 10 seconds. So so the first time is only a couple of seconds, but you did hear something in that one too? Yes, that's why I did it the second time. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now it makes sense. Yeah, that's the only reason I did it the second time. Isn't that interesting? So on the on the first Snapchat, it was just it was just really just because the place was so beautiful and you thought, this, I'm going to get a video of this little room. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what I did. That is a trip, man. It's such a, a cool little thing. And because Chris said, we can't use it if, if we don't know the background to it because nobody's going to understand it. And I said, well, I'll talk to Vilma. She'll tell me. Okay, you could explain it. Okay. A little bit yeah. simpler. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So she's doing a... I've never done Snapchat. So she's... I thought a, Snapchat... Didn't... Don't they, like, disappear or go away? I don't know. You can't keep, you can't keep them. I, maybe I've got it mixed up. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So she's going to do a Snapchat... She takes a video of this room because it's so beautiful for for a memory type thing. Where were they? In in the in the bathroom, uh, or the Miss, master bathroom? Yeah, Miss Mrs. Doheny's master dressing room. But oh. she would, but tied to that dressing room is a bathroom. That's where they are. I see. So she does it the first time only two seconds, and then went uh oh, stopped it. And then played it back, and, we, and okay. Why did she? She why did she, she only let go record? of the button? Oh, you're supposed to hold it down when yeah, you record. Yeah, yeah. I she see. let go of the button. So she realized it, she did something wrong. Yeah, and it stopped. Got it. And then she she played that part back, that two seconds, and she heard, <laughs> and she's like, "That's what Elvis says. What was that?" And she goes, "I don't know." So she goes, "Let's try." And then she tried it again for and ten, got it two times in a row. Yes. So she did it for ten seconds, and you and you can see that she passes Elva. And Elva kind of smiles, and she goes back, and that's when you hear the dishes All right, crash. Let's hear it. Make sense? Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. So the the di- the dishes are completely they're, fabricated. There's from, nothing in the house. Yeah, there's nothing it's there. It's completely. And they've empty. got they're cleaning. In the, they're in the bathroom. What would the dishes be in the bathroom? And, and they have cleaning. No cleaning stuff sounds like that. Those plastic oh, bottles. I think I think Elva has. I think she has gloves on it and like yeah, a broom no, no, no. or okay, something. Here it is. So when she's, you can see it on YouTube. We got that video from yeah. her. Thank you, yeah. Vilma. Um, when she's doing that, she's just doing snap. She doesn't hold it steady at all. You can't see. I mean, for Snapchat, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. even see. Yeah. But it was just passing by. Yeah, she's just taking it. Wait, she, Elva took it. Is that right? No, no. Vilma took it of Elva. Oh, Elva. That's Elva. So she's just, just slowly panning in the bathroom, goes past Elva, and goes over to the door, where the entrance door, and that's where you hear the crash. Oh, it doesn't make sense. That's why I wanted to, to, to play this. It is bizarre. It's very bizarre because it. And, and you guys think about it. Tell me. Leave some comments below if you want what you think the sound is, because uh, you know. And it sounds like oh, one more time. Just one more. All time. right. Here we go. Is there anything where they are? Hear me out. Is there anything like a metal bar or something in that bathroom area that, that like she could have bumped or a, a, a ray like a railing for towels or anything like that? No, and don't you think she would know that if she bumped it? Yes, I'm just they, asking. No, yeah, you, know, you know, being the the uh, yes the critic that you are. Yes, that's right. Skeptic. Skeptic is the, is word. the better word. Yes. So uh, no, there's nothing okay. in there. There's okay. nothing in and there. And she would. You're right. She wouldn't go, uh, oh, uh, she would just say, I bumped that thing. Let's yeah, do it yeah, again, yeah. and I don't want to have that. But she did, the first time, she did it real quick. Yeah. And her, like, clink, clink, like what was that? I don't know. Let's try it again. Oh, eh, too bad she didn't do it, like, several times. Another time, yeah, man. But she did it twice, and yeah, we, we love awesome. that. It's awesome. Well, that was fantastic. Yeah. I think that was one of the better sounds of the yeah. world. Yeah, and she she got back to me yesterday and called her, hey, could you, and she, of course, talk to me. She's awesome. Nice, awesome. nice. Love her. All right. Yeah. We can't thank you enough. That's yes. Cleet's line, but yes. but I truly mean that. Um, if you do uh, enjoy this, like, subscribe, ring the bell, as Cleet does, mm. and um, and and then leave any comments uh, there on YouTube if you would like. Look what I found. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, if you have any comments, leave them. And if you want to uh, have something, a comment, and give us a comment of something that you don't want everybody to see, feel free to go to our website, ghostsofgraystone.com, and leave it there. Uh, personal, uh, send us an email, whatever you want to do. That would be great. Um, we have the book uh, available, and it's got, we send, um, if, if you buy the book, we send a yes 1930s census bookmark and yeah. it really is interesting because when you look at it it's the census has all the people that were in that in that uh location the in the house yeah you turn it over and it's got all the names i don't know if everybody's probably listening is way young but there yeah. was used to be a a guy that was in the circus his name was tom mix he was also a cowboy yeah well he became a yeah. cowboy after he was in the circus yeah and he's on there too, but that's living nearby. But it has all the maids' names and everything. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I, we've never talked about that before, yeah. but it's yeah. pretty amazing. There you Who's go. That? And um, that's kind of it. Yeah, man. What's up next? Uh, next. Well, uh, the next show is going to be apparitions. It's going to be show black number shadows. twenty. Yeah, apparitions, black shadows, attacks, and electrified. Yeah. Electrified. I don't know what that is. You're gonna find out, okay. and this, and right. it's a great story. We're gonna wrap it up. Uh, our final twentieth. Yeah, show man. Our, our is next. Yeah. Week. So that'll be it for us. But yeah. um, we'll, we'll talk about that then. Yeah. Uh, but for tonight, remember, just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. And we found that out tonight, mm -hmm. didn't we? Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. Hundred horses in five freight trains couldn't drag me. Into that early grave I've cashed in The mistakes I've made While God rode shotgun From a million miles away I don't wake in sorrow I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget Blinded by hate, blinded by hope.